Well, joining us for more on that, John Sheridan joins us from Fig Securities. Uh, Jonathan, a very warm welcome to you this morning. I guess um, the, the Greek deal uh, news uh, it really was overshadowed by that surprise devaluation of the yuan by China yesterday, and really that's had a huge effect and ramifications on global markets around the world. Good morning, Leanne. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, Greece has been the major news story for the last little while, and the news that they had actually reached a deal with their creditors and the IMF effectively rolling over on their requirement for uh, debt forgiveness was, I, I thought, you know, would have been the major news story of the day. But of course, we had the devaluation of the yuan, which sent ripples throughout risk markets overnight. Um, you know, we saw the Dow Jones, for example, off uh, nearly one and a half percent, and bonds took a, a big rally on the back of that. And the U.S. 10-year Treasury uh, came in nearly 10 points in yield. So it certainly um, saw those risk assets, you know, being sold off and those bonds rallying. How how can we expect those to sort of perform today, given the the data we, we have out? I mean, nothing major due to be released. But what are you expecting for the day ahead? Yeah, look, I think we we might see a little pullback. Um, we might see some profit taking. Uh, you know, they're they're the most liquid bond markets in the world. Um, we might see uh, all of that trade really was in, in the futures in our market locally, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in, in the actual physical cash bonds, but I suspect we'll see a bit of a, bit of a pullback and, and yields just a touch higher as the market digests what that really means for Australia. Jonathan, I wanted to get your thoughts. I mean, at the moment, you know, we've seen the bond market, I guess, um, you know, low participation, I guess, low volume sort of has been a bit of a general theme across those bond markets. Locally, though, what, what are you actually seeing investors doing at the moment? Yeah, so I think it's a consolidation period for investors, to be honest. Uh, we, we've been uh, big fans of inflation-linked bonds over the last two years, and uh, at least two years. And I think we are seeing investors take advantage of the fact that with current levels of inflation quite low, those bonds relatively are cheap. Um, because you know the, the future expectations for inflation are relatively low. Uh, however, history has told us that that's not necessarily going to carry on forever. So we've been sh seeing a lot of interest from clients in uh, inflation-linked bonds. We also have a lot of interest in foreign currency bonds, obviously, given the reduction in the Aussie dollar against the US dollar in particular. And we continue to think that there, there could be some further downside for the, for the Aussie there, particularly against the US dollar uh, a bit more and some sterling. So that's really where we're focused on. Um, institutional clients seem to be taking a bit more risk, um, looking at sub-debt, for example, rather than senior. So um, I think there's a bit of a risk on tone generally, um, given the, the, the view that you saw with the Bendigo and Adelaide issue yesterday coming out fully floating. Uh, I think we're seeing that clients are thinking we're perhaps near the bottom or at the bottom of the interest rate cycle. Um, and Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, I know, is one that you've been monitoring lately. We saw them doing a $600 million five-year floating bond, I guess, showing really that investors or that demand by investors for those floating rate bonds is certainly there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where you're seeing the institutional interest coming into to floating rate notes. We're also seeing private client interest in high yield floating rate notes. Um, obviously, with high yield, you need to be very aware of your diversification. So there are, there are six or eight names that are available now in the Australian dollar high yield market. So we're seeing clients take diversified portfolios of those as well. I just wanted to ask you locally as well, we did mention it earlier, you know, it will be fairly quiet on the uh, the local agenda. We have um, Consumer Confidence, monthly Consumer Confidence out today, but we also have um, RBA Deputy Governor Philip Lowe speaking today. So what will you be looking out for there? Yeah, well, you know, the title of his speech is very interesting. He'll be talking on uh, land values and monetary policy, and I think that's a very hot topic at the moment, given what the RBA and the regulators have been doing uh, and looking for in relation to the housing market, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne. So uh, a very timely speech, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, when, when people try and dissect the, the, the words that he's using and, and try and link that to future RBA policy. Fantastic. Jonathan, really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Great. Thanks, Leanne. Jonathan Sheridan joining us there from Fig Security.